I haven't played any of the Prince of Persia games before this, but I have seen the movie when I was a kid, and I thought it was fun at the time. The Rogue Prince of Persia caught my attention because, well, the prince is purple. Oh, and it's a roguelike. Since I like the genre, I decided to see what this game's like, and it has potential, but it's just not there yet. So the Rogue Prince of Persia starts off by talking about the Prince of Persia, a hero who provoked the Huns, causing a war. He ends up losing to their dark magic and wakes up three nights later. He starts off determined to stop the Huns from reaching the city, only to realize that he was too late. Hoping to avenge everyone who died fighting, he keeps going until he dies too. Or at least he thought he would. His bola ends up protecting him, turning back time and taking him back to the oasis three days after the Huns invaded. The prince is the only one who's aware of this cycle, so he just needs to keep trying until he finds a way to save his kingdom. A lot of things in the game are similar to Dead Cells since the same devs worked on it, but I think the Rogue Prince of Persia stands on its own. I only played a little bit of Dead Cells to compare both games, but the first thing that I noticed in the tutorial of Prince of Persia was the controls. The movement, platforming, and combat felt really good when I got the hang of it, which I think is really important because of how much the game relies on its parkour mechanics. You'll be going through different areas, platforming and wall running through them while defeating enemies along the way. And since these areas are procedurally generated with every new run, things aren't always in the same place. It's important to explore the whole place though, especially since you never know what you'll run into. There could be hidden doorways that lead you to treasure chests and optional challenges that reward you with new weapons and abilities. You can even find shops a blacksmith, and NPCs with quests to give. The best part is you don't need to backtrack too much when you're exploring. Wells always spawn right before you find a point of interest in a level, so you can fast travel to any of the previous ones that you've found. This was really helpful when I couldn't afford an item, for example. I'd just go ahead and farm gold from enemies, then fast travel straight back to the shop. Now, defeating enemies is as simple as spamming attacks on them, but you'll need to use the environment to your advantage since kicking the Huns is a big part of the combat. So if there's another enemy or a wall nearby, you can kick them against it to stun them. And if there are traps like spikes, you can do the same thing and instantly kill them. Some enemies have blue health that indicates they have a shield, so if there's an enemy with normal health nearby, you can kick them against the shielded one, causing their shield to be destroyed. The enemy variety isn't very big right now, but it helps that you can unlock quite a bit of weapons and tools that you can use against them. They all have their own special attacks too, though my personal favorite was the Falcata. It really helped me defeat the second boss in the game, since it stacks damage when you continuously attack an enemy. There are also tools which act like secondary weapons, like a bow and a chakram. Those were really helpful when I needed to deal additional damage at a distance. Another thing that can help you in your run are medallions. These things give you special abilities like poisoning or slowing down enemies, and depending on which slot you place them, you can increase the effects of other medallions next to them. But just like weapons and tools, you can only find the medallions you've unlocked in your next run when you've crafted their recipe back in the oasis. Crafting them requires spirit glimmers, which are these purple things that you collect from enemies and find around the game. Just like gold, you lose them when you die, so you have to go to these fountains around the levels to send them back to the oasis. It's one of the many reasons why it's important to die over and over in the game in order to progress. But yeah, spirit glimmers are super important for both crafting and unlocking permanent abilities. I actually finished the game's early access content before permanent abilities were added to it in a new update. And oh man, I felt like I played the whole thing on hard mode. These upgrades would have made things so much easier since you can unlock things like increased health and the ability to carry more than one healing potion with you. It took me around 6 hours to beat the game overall, and then I spent 2 more hours playing through the update and unlocking new content. There's only a few levels and 2 bosses in the game that's out right now, so it didn't take too long to finish. Like you can try to unlock more weapons, tools, and medallions, but 
That's it, really. And getting everything can be RNG based, considering how each run is different. I think I ended up doing all possible side quests too, and exhausted the dialogue of practically every NPC. The new location in the update was fun and challenging, but again, it wasn't much. It felt rushed, and it felt more like a little taste of what the game could offer. There were also sections of the game that got way too difficult, particularly in the second boss fight. It almost felt like he served as a barrier to lengthen the game because of all his different attacks. The game also has a few bugs too, like when medallions would spawn next to each other. One would just keep bouncing between two of them until I picked one up. But yeah, the Rogue Prince of Persia has a lot of potential, though I honestly didn't find the story or characters too interesting. The gameplay is what really carries it. It just felt so smooth to play. It helps that the soundtrack is really good too, so I'd end up getting into a sort of flow state. But as fun as this game is, I can't recommend it at this stage. Mostly because it's way too expensive for an early access game that can be finished in a couple of hours. You're better off buying other roguelikes that either provide more at a similar price, or something even cheaper than that with way more content. But if you want to try it yourself, the game's available on Steam. Let me know what you thought about the video, and thank you to my patrons at Patreon for supporting my channel. Oh, and like and subscribe to support my channel. Playing this was fun and at times frustrating, but I'm hoping that it will end up being even better with more updates. Anyway, I'll go work on my next video now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.